welcome back. Just waiting for a few more people to come in. Okay, so we've got our second session this morning. Um, this is going to be exciting. We've got uh, Boyan Babic, who's going to be talking about AI-driven search. And Boyan is from Nextdoor. So please think of some questions for him later. And Boyan, over to you. Thanks, Charlie. Hey, everybody. Uh, my name is Boyan. What a conference. So much amazing uh, talks, uh, invigorating conversations, very inspiring. Uh, and today we'll be talking about the search at Nextdoor. It is uh, subtitled but with uh, what are our neighbors searching for? Um, so let me first give a little bit of introduction about myself. Uh, my name is Boyan, like Charlie mentioned. Uh, here's my Twitter handle, this is my email. My career has been pretty much within the relevance and search space. Uh, I worked at relevance as a relevance engineer at Groupon, built ML platform at HeapCamp, and now I'm a DRI for search at the next door. Before uh, getting into the search stuff, uh, I have a quick survey. Uh, who of you guys here have heard about Nextdoor? Oh, cool. And how many of you guys are using Nextdoor? Sweet. Thank you all for being wonderful neighbors. Uh, to give everybody uh, more uh, insight of what actually Nextdoor is will help us get a better understanding of what we're trying to do here with search. Uh, Nextdoor is a social network where real people trying to connect with each other. Uh, it is multi-sided marketplace where we have one-side neighbors uh, that have their own intentions. But on the other side, we have businesses and agencies that might have other objectives. And the goal of the search is to provide a fair marketplace uh, for all the actors in the marketplace. The reason why we, we underline fair marketplace is because all the act, actor ob objectives may be competing at each other. What neighbors want may not be what ultimately business want or agencies. So let's dive a little bit deeper what actually our neighbors want. Our neighbors want to connect with each other. They want to trade. They want to give away stuff. They want to buy stuff. They want to sell stuff. Our neighbors want to get informed. They also want to provide information. On the other side, we have businesses. Businesses, as any other business, they want to get a footprint into their stores. They want to connect with neighbors. They want, they want to be the most important thing in their neighborhood. They want to be a place where people are gathering. Uh, businesses have ability to advertise and communicate with, with neighbors. Uh, and the third, third player in this marketplace are public agencies. Public agencies want to have ability to provide important information to the neighbor uh, and also like have ability to uh, get the insights based on the uh, their uh, campaigns. So with all that in hand, uh, we have to say that Nextdoor is quite vibrant place. It has been growing really fast. You can see that in the last three years it had been growing 31% uh, three, three, three year over year uh, with respect to verified neighbors. We are in one in three households in the US. We have over 70 million verified neighbors worldwide, and we have 35 million weekly active users. Uh, now getting back to search. So Nextdoor is a marketplace. There are many players. And now we, as a search org, we're trying to uh, build fairness. And with that in mind, we also want to introduce some guiding principles. Uh, and we have borrowed these principles from the Microsoft Research handbook, which was Intro to Neural Information Retrieval. 
uh, and we found these very uh, insightful and very, very useful. So first of all, we need to go beyond TF-IDF and BM25. Our search needs to be semantic. We need to understand our entities. We need to have robust taxonomy and to have rich attributes that are powering each of our verticals that we currently support. And also, uh, search needs to be robust. It needs to be uh, robust to rare inputs. Uh, we should not be dealing with the out of vocabulary words. There should be a way to o overcome the rare, rare words or words they haven't seen before. Uh, we have to have robustness to the corpus invariance. Uh, you can think about the some uh, spikes in our in in our world that imp impact our uh, our corpus. Like you know, one one example, uh, one extreme example is the COVID. It changed all of our lives. It changed also what we are talking about. It changed what our neighbors are talking about. Uh, one less uh, extreme example would be Hurricane Harvey in Texas last year, which completely completely changed what our neighbors are talking about in, in the neighborhoods they have, been, they have been affected. So there is a temporality that we have to care about and have to be mindful of. Uh, also, search needs to be uh, robust to the variable input lens. We should be amazing at the head queries, but we should be really able to provide answers to questions. And last and not least, with respect to the robustness is the errors to inputs. Our neighbors might be busy, they might be doing some uh, other stuff, so they might be not necessarily expressing themselves cor correctly. We have to have ability to correct themselves and also provide ability for them to correct ourselves when we are being wrong. Uh, next point, which, it, which we think is very important, is that uh, search needs to be sensitive to context. We need to use all the explicit and implicit information that we have to provide a search result page. Uh, you can think about if somebody is searching for uh, concerts during Memorial Day, we have explicit query from which we have intent of somebody's interest in events. Uh, we know that this is upcoming event. We know person's location. Thus, we know where to search for the events. And we also know Memorial Day, we know when the date is. So there is a really high bar for us to actually uh, 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 provide really useful results uh, considering uh, all the advancement that we have in technology. Uh, next point is about efficiency. Uh, we introduced the multi-tier telescopic architecture where the uh, number of elements that are being ranked or being processed decreases from the top of the funnel all the way to the end of the funnel, while the models that we use are being more and more complex. And lastly, uh, monitoring and observability. I think I, don't, I want to like underline how important it is to have very, very robust tracking, alerting, uh, uh, and for search we use uh, NSCG, MAP, and MRR. Cool search architecture. This is the high level architecture of the search at Nextdoor. Centerpiece of this diagram is the search itself. Uh, and you can see how this particular diagram is depending on many other pieces of our Nextdoor infrastructure. We depend on the offline pipelines for the, for the uh, explicit and implicit feedback. We uh, also depend offline pipelines for the uh, feedback from the, us from, from the users interacting with their apps and, 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 the, and the web as well. Uh, you can see how we are surrounded with a bunch of ML models that we're using. Uh, and we are very grateful to be working with an amazing uh, ML core team that actually provides us really uh, impressive infrastructure for us to be able to run uh, multiple ML models uh, in parallel and at scale. So the 
with that in mind, uh, the search journey starts with the search clients that actually ent enter the search. And as we as we are progressing down this uh, multi-tier architecture, the number of results that we process is, is smaller and smaller. We start with query understanding pipeline, which calls uh, multiple ML models. We'll get into that in a bit. After that, we had the recall stage, which fans out the request to the ad server as well as the Elasticsearch service. After that, we have ranking stage, uh, after which, which then basically is calling our search ranking model. And then, uh, post that, we have a bunch of uh, business objectives which we, which we try to optimize for to provide fairness uh, and eventually return back the results to our clients. We log all the impressions, all the clicks, all the features that we have been using. We retrain and deploy models periodically, and we do this uh, again. Let's start with query understanding. Query understanding stage is is a stage where we are trying to get the high level features uh, from the customer intent. If somebody is searching for recommendation for plumber, you can look look at the search search results on the right hand. We are fanning out requests to multiple verticals like posts, neighbors, businesses, for sale and free and neighborhoods. Uh, but we understand that this is this is this person is trying to learn about the businesses. So we need to understand like what vertical people are talking about. Uh, on top of that, we also need to make sure that uh, our our company is making money. So we also make sure that we are providing the enough impressions for our partners. And then also we need to actually provide uh, quite good res quite good uh, organic results. Uh, Search at Nextdoor is 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 interesting in the sense that it's combination of multiple uh, types of searches. You can think about it as in combination of classical information retrieval and e-commerce. So intent itself uh, is a little bit different depending if you are talking about the classical information retrieval or e-commerce. So we have to employ different models to actually get diff intense for different verticals. Uh, it's also important that our product uh, UI and UX is streamlined across verticals, so we provide co consistent experience across, across, across the uh, different surfaces. And there are many dimensions that, are, that we use to interpret user intent, uh, which then impacts how we, how we are returning the search results, like, uh, like in, this, in this slide here. Uh, let's go in st in, into the current understanding stages. We start with getting a raw query, and from the raw query, we go into the normalization stage, uh, where we are doing a, where we're doing basic cleanup uh, from the HTML tags. Uh, we are doing basically uh, cleanup of the robust, uh, like a bogus uh, inputs, we are running spell correction, query segmentation. After that, we are entering the fan out stage, and our fan out stage is calling multiple uh, ML models, uh, and in this case, we are calling intent prediction, we are calling NER, keyword expansion, we are identifying queries, and this is very extens extensible architecture, so we can actually add many other, many other models uh, uh, to make our uh, intent even better. And after that, we are gathering all of the metadata into the current staining uh, object. Let's start with uh, spell correction. There have been multiple attempts to solve spell correction at Nextdoor, uh, starting from a simple edit distance uh, statistical model, even the uh, HMMs. What we ended up doing is actually deep learning 
application uh, of the uh, encoding decoding architecture. Uh, so we are in the nut in the nutshell, our model is basically sequence to sequence uh, uh, encoder decoder with uh, attention. Um, so to give example, if somebody tries to search for police and they misspell misspell the uh, e with w. Uh, we are first splitting the input key query into the set of three-letter engrams. Uh, we are also like you know fencing that that that, qu that query with the with the hashes at the beginning and the end. Uh, we are doing uh, encoding of those resp respective tokens. We are doing one hot encoding and then fa passing that into the to the model itself. If you can see. Uh, in the decoding, uh, uh, into the decoding stage, we are actually replacing the last engram uh, with the correct one. So basically, we have instead of uh, CW hash, we have CE hash. We are merging all these engrams, and basically, we end up having a police. Once, once we have normalized spell, spell corrected query, we are entering the intent prediction. Example of that would be if somebody is searching uh, at Nintendo uh, in a query. We need to understand this is topic electronics and that vertical is classified. And let's get let's get in depth in the, into the intent prediction model. We started by looking at the B part I graph between query and the documents that had been pressed and clicked. That worked really well for the head queries. However, for the tail queries, we actually have not many results and we have lots of variants. Um, so uh, we figured that we need to actually come up with uh, something better. Uh, and uh, another issue that we have faced was that we had incomplete taxonomy uh, and it was ever changing. So we need to figure out how do we get the proper proper uh, uh, labels for, for, for our queries. So uh, the next version of the intent prediction that we used was actually using the architecture which we see on the, on the right side. So we are using character-based encoding of our query. We're passing that to the deep layer. In production, we are using CNN due to the, due to the perf performance uh, uh, gains compared to the LSTM at birth. Once we get the query embeddings, we are uh, combining that with additional features to get the dense layer, and then we are also like you know shrinking this dense layer to get the uh, output layer we are pretty much having here uh, multinomial classification and uh, the classes that we are trying to predict are the uh, query uh, verticals. We got uh, the training training sample uh, for this particular model we got uh, by having by leveraging uh, labeling tools at scale like Prodigy or Appen. Highly recommend using any of these if you guys haven't tried. Uh, we have we have or organized our team and uh, we had a bunch of labeling parties. Uh, there was so much fun. It brought brought the teams together and also uh, we're able to get very useful useful uh, data sets for, for to train this model. Uh, this model, uh, considering that it, it's a character based uh, uh, model, it's uh, very robust to the invariances in the in, in the input, so it also works uh, really well for the Mis uh, misspelled queries. Uh, there is application in the autocomplete. So if, if uh, queries are incomplete, we are still able to predict the vertical. So we can use that to rank, rank, the, rank the results in the autocomplete as well. Uh, and yeah, this, is, this, this basically helped us get much better at understanding custom, custom intent. Next model in the fan out stage is the our NER model. So given the original query in Nintendo, uh, uh, the NER, NER model will basically give us 
the star position and position of entity in respective entity. In this case, we have a product entity. And let's dive into the model itself. So there are many of the shells and the R models that one can use. Uh, for us, of the shell models did not work. Uh, the reason why it did not work predominantly, they have been uh, sentence based, and the for our for, for us, we need to actually have the qu query uh, uh, level uh, NER. And the reason why we're doing this is. Uh, we want to actually get the entities from the queries so we can understand how which entities people are talking about and how they relate, relate to each other. Uh, another reason why why the off the shelf models did not work for us is that we have we need we needed entities that are nexo specific, uh, like a service, to to express the intent of uh, 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 somebody talking or or looking for local services, like in example before recommendations for plumber, uh, plumber being a service, and recommendation being intent. So we did leverage the bunch of uh, architectures that we found available online. So we tried with the, uh, tried Roberta, uh, Distilbert, and, dist uh, and uh, both cased and uncased, uh, and best model that we used that 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 we sh that showed for us uh, is the uh, the still birth uncased, uh, which had the best uh, harmonic mean. Uh, we did make some change on, on that model. Uh, we added dense layer uh, on on top, so we can actually have have the uh, uh, classification uh, uh, for the uh, pro pro proper classification uh, 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 for for our for our uh, uh, entities that we care. Um, so just to sum it up, we basically got the off-the-shell architecture, stripped all the, all the power params and weights, reinitialized them, and trained on our data. We uh, got data from uh, using a combination of the manual labeling, algorithmic uh, data uh, uh, processing, uh, and uh, yeah, we ended up uh, being quite happy with this, with this particular model. Uh, next uh, model in the query and standing stage is the query expansion. So given the query in Tendo, uh, we also may not have the inventory for the Nintendo. We may want to actually have supplement inventory. So we are using expansions like uh, for the Nintendo Switch, Xbox, PlayStation, PS5, it's quite tricky with expansions. We make sure that the expansion are the same entity uh, that that the original query is. We need to make sure that they don't overshadow your uh, intent. So backfills should never be shown higher than the than the original 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 query. Uh, so. Uh, sim similarly, like a uh, NER model, we use the architectures where we just strip comp strip completely the weights. Uh, we made some changes. We add dense layer to reduce the dimensionality on, on top. On top, uh, and the model that we use the, is the mini uh, LM uh, language model. Uh, coming back uh, uh, to lessons learned here is. Uh, off the shelf uh, and also fine tuning did not work for us. We have lots of data and we're able to train these models and showcase the uh, better results uh, for the next data, data set compared to the what we found uh, off the shelf or uh, using fine tuning. So the idea was uh, that we should get the user sessions and every single query that has been conducted in, in the user sessions. So you can think about reformulations uh, and different types of expressing them, people trying to express themselves, those being a single sentences. Uh, and we will, we will basically sample, we, we will sample 
uh, those sentences for the positive for the positive uh, 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 query skip skip grams, while while basically uh, we are we are also uh, using negative uh, sampling from rest of the corpora. Um, so we are uh, optimizing model by trying to uh, minimize the cost and similarity between between the positive samples and maximize the cost similarity between the negative sample, positive and negative sample. Uh, uh, and we use the architecture, uh, uh, which is something we got uh, uh, off the shelf and initially modified. Yeah, and then we get the query embedding model. Uh, this query embedding model we use to get the top K retrieval. We use uh, also uh, FIS uh, for faster faster retrieval of the of the top K. So we have seen a combination of uh, uh, FIS and the sentence uh, based embeddings be much better performing than than the uh, original word to vec query expansion that we have. Cool. So before we construct the Elasticsearch query, uh, we have uh, the following metadata. So we have location, we have user context, we have predicted 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 vertical, we have predict predicted topic for vertical, uh, expanded keywords, embedded query, we have connections, we are social network. Cool. So once we all we gather all this metadata, now we are getting into the recall stage. We use TF-IDF retrieval, uh, and we support multiple verticals. So we are fanning out the Elasticsearch queries to the uh, multiple indexes that are across the clusters. So we support business index, user index, content index, and classify index. There is some complexity how we organize indexes, but this is outside of the uh, this this uh, this talk, uh, we d we do plan to use uh, embeddings based retrieval, uh, but at this point we are actually using ex user expansions to ex expand query expansions, which I just recently mentioned, to uh, expand uh, uh, the queries in, in the embedding space. So if somebody searches for the Xbox, we also add like expansions to Nintendo Switch and PS5. If somebody is searching for sofa, we will expand that to be couch and ottoman. And now, when we get all the results back, uh, we are entering the ranking stage. Uh, learning to rank seems to be already a stable state for the uh, search search ranking. Uh, the aim of the learning to rank is to learn a function that will discriminate space of positive and negative labels. So in natural, we're trying to fit a hyperplane between between positive and negative samples, where positive samples being the results that customers are clicking on and negative samples that customers are, have not been clicked on. Uh, and respect to the features, we use pretty much uh, Lots of traditional as well as well as the statistical based features for all the entities that we support. We also do a bunch of cross pollination between other teams. So, for instance, the feed ranking and notification team uh, borrowed us a bunch of features from them, but also searches providing a bunch of features for these other teams. Uh, we also have uh, deep learning features. If you have, if you remember, we also have embeddifying query stage where we are embeddifying a query before we are passing it to ranking. And the reason why learning to rank, and especially in this case, lambda rank is is quite uh, uh, important, is, is is because it bridges a gap between the what we are observe, which is the NDCG. Uh, uh, Changes within the R search, as well as well as the uh, the optimization function that we are trying to uh, uh, model model user behavior on. So uh, lambda is being changed by applying a delta of NDCG whenever there is a swap between 
between the uh, positions between i and j when, the, when we have like two elements being swapped. Uh, this is working quite good in the sense that uh, we deploy the uh, like GBM model version or implementation of the Lambda rank to production. Uh, latencies are quite quite low. We have like a latency around 30 milliseconds, and we're ranking 200 documents uh, per query. Uh, and now uh, I want to talk about like some really exciting ranking features that we discovered that work really well for us. For us. And we're predominantly focusing on here on the on the uh, on the deep features. The Microsoft Research has developed a paper called uh, DSSM, which is uh, using a very interesting trick. Instead of trying to embeddify uh, the queries uh, using the tokens uh, as they come in, they're actually splitting. Splitting the queries into three into three letter uh, engrams. So if somebody is typing a query a cat, it will be changed into the cat with starting and ending hashes, and then we will basically uh, encode that into the hash c a c a t and a t hash. With this little trick, we are reducing our space from uh, several million to just like 40, oh, 40 to 50,000 uh, tokens, we are resolving the issue of uh, out of word vocab vocabulary uh, issue, and there is almost no collision. This particular approach is able to capture the uh, subword prefixes and suffixes. Uh, it's also like performing quite better than the than the uh, uh, query to vec and uh, uh, word to vec which you had before. Uh, and lastly, uh, it's also very robust to the small typos uh, uh, where people have uh, where, where people are trying to like you know uh, express themselves but not necessarily providing properly proper query. Uh, and the architecture that is is that, that we use to pro to get uh, this this uh, representation in place is the uh, Siamese architecture, where on the right side we have query encoder, and right side we have document encoder. And document encoder, we actually use the uh, title and description of the text. Sorry, the description of document that is being visible to our to our customers. Uh, and we are jointly training uh, both uh, query embeddings, document embeddings, and we are trying to minimize minimize uh, uh, cost and similarity uh, between positive samples and maximize between the between the uh, negative samples. So here is like for 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 instance, if somebody searches for searches for the Xbox, and person clicks on the Nintendo Switch, that's considered considered a positive sample. Uh, next example, we're sampling from the space of all, 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 all other, all other, other uh, 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 like titles that we have. So, for instance, like slur, slur service is basically uh, next sample. So the vector should be pointing in the, in the different direction. And uh, at the query uh, runtime. So when a query comes in, we will be getting uh, encoder representation of a query, for example, cat. And for each of these tokens, we would basically do the lookup uh, within the embeddings, and then we'll average them out. Considering that there is almost no collision using this approach, we can actually uh, be quite good in representing our input queries. Uh, uh, and uh, in, in in the form of informal inform embeddings, uh, documents themselves are also being uh, embedding using using this model, and we would basically uh, whenever we are indexing uh, a new document, we would be basically calling this model to get embeddings representation of 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 a document and 
uh, put it in, into the into into our uh, uh, feature store. So we are calculating the cost and similarity between query and the and the and the candidates, and using those scores as the features for the ranking. And this turned out to be one of the, one of the most important one of the most important features that that we have I I in our ranking. Uh, right be after the TFIDF score. Cool. Wrapping up, uh, you guys maybe, mention, maybe noticed that I haven't mentioned uh, core ranking in this presentation. So that is a little bit of teaser. So if you guys want to work with us on the very interesting problems on uh, optimizing multi-objectives and introducing uh, RLib into our uh, infrastructure, uh, please uh, uh, check our blog, uh, check our careers page, also don't be afraid to reach out. So uh, you can reach out mid-mail uh, uh, boyan at nextdoor.com. Yeah, so there are a bunch of references uh, which uh, I have uh, mentioned in this talk. Uh, so there are you can guys check them out later, but yeah, that's basically it. Thank you, Boyan. So, do we have any questions for Boyan? Right, I'm going to come here first and I can see you there. Okay. Thank you. It's really great to see all the pieces f starting to fit together like that. Um, I think you just said email me about this, but can you talk about, can you talk about the uh, sort of what you're, what you've tried for multi-objective optimization on the marketplace and what, and where you're going with it? Like in brief? Yeah. Yeah. So this is currently what we are working on. It's uh, in progress. Uh, general ideas that we have is we try to have our objectives very simple at this stage. Uh, we try to have different objectives for different cohorts of users. Uh, and for instance, like you know, if we have resurrected user, we may want to optimize for for the let's say uh, 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 like conversion. But if we have tenured user, we are trying to like you know, optimize for let's say some business objective like revenue. So where the we try to figure out where the regret is the, the, the like smallest. That's where we're actually pushing more for the business objectives, where we have the like you know high risk of maybe like churn. We will try to push for the conversion. So that's cur our current strategy. But we are trying to go and uh, basically uh, more formalize this in form of like you know, applying uh, our lib and uh, uh, a more 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 robust uh, explore explore style strategies. Okay, so uh, what was our next person with a question? There we are. Thanks, that was a, a great talk. I saw you have uh, quite a few verticals on your search UI, and, and you also have kind of an all vertical. I was wondering if you could talk about uh, some of the techniques you use to combine the results from your different indices. Yeah, yeah, this is, this is something for us uh, also that we are uh, in the form of exploration. Uh, at this point, uh, we did notice uh, when we run experiments, we have noticed a bunch of cannibalization between verticals. We did notice that, like, uh, when people are searching for businesses, they may f they may actually have their intent met either in business section or in post section. Or if people are searching for, let's say, classifieds, maybe like you know, baby toys. They might find like their 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 intent being met in the classified section, but also in post section. So there is uh, uh, currently our sections are separate, uh, but uh, we start to think about more and more how do we actually blend them together into the into the uh, unified feed, uh, so where we can actually optimize for for diversity uh, and optimize maybe like you know whatever di whatever, whatever uh, the uh, the diversity means, like you know, it can be basically, uh, uh, but it can be, uh, let's say, uh, fr optimizing for like a combination of freshness with like you know price point with like you know to topic ID 
as a vector or uh, we we haven't got to got got to experiment with this but we can definitely see there is lots of potential of actually uh, blending verticals together and trying to optimize the the blend the version of the verticals by just like you know optimizing some diversity function okay uh, so we've got some online questions. A uh, quick one from Alicia asks, what's the response time like? Yeah, yeah. So uh, most of the models that we are using have SLAs of 50 milliseconds. So if we basically sum up all of these, all of these, uh, all of these latencies, uh, we ended up being 50 around 600 milliseconds. Uh, P95 is a little more spiky, but yeah, that's about it. Great, thank you. Um, and then we have uh, uh, Kylie asks, what kind of proof of concepts, if any, did you do before deploying a multi-stage search infrastructure? Um, or maybe another way to answer, ask that is, what order did you implement each component in that uh, infrastructure? Yeah, yeah. so uh, the search is is very important place where we are uh, able to capture various intent of 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 our of, of our customers so we are very diligent about like how do we introduce new verticals so we we'll always go back go to the customer and figure out what customers are searching for so if we are able to detect a query pattern that we haven't that that we are not properly supporting and we want to introduce we may start to think about is this uh, candidate for new vertical, or this is something which we can do to actually uh, uh, make search better within existing verticals. If it's a new vertical, we have a run book and playbook for other teams if they want to join uh, the search. They have ability to add, add the new indexes. They have ability to uh, run the analysis on the uh, query understanding which query patterns they want to, be, they want to cover uh, their search. Uh, uh, and also uh, uh, make sure that all the SLAs are met with respect to the both response time and in indexing time. And then we A-B test and figure out if this new vertical is the uh, proper candidate uh, to be actually baselined or not. Okay, so we've got another few questions. I'm gonna try and get through a few of these. Um, uh, so Christian asks, is the document to query embedding similarity score a single feature in the ranking model? It is not. We have currently around like 60 or 70 features uh, in the in the ranking. So we have uh, user-specific uh, features. Uh, we have document-specific features. We have hood-specific features. But then we also also have a bunch of uh, 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 like uh, deep deep features. Like uh, uh, I used the example in this talk uh, just to illustrate one of the very very important features that we had in in our in our model. Okay. And uh, Angsgar, um, who sadly couldn't make it today to, to talk, asks, in the end, what was the sum over k? I is there a vector for each n-gram of the query and you sum them? Yeah, exactly. So, so, so basically, we would just average out, average out the uh, vector representation of each of these n-grams. Okay. Um, Cody asks, do you think switching to semantic search for the recall phase will allow you to remove the query expansion stage? Yeah, that, that is the plan. Awesome. And our last question, uh, where do you store the embeddings to find top K neighbors? That's from Leonardo. Yeah, so so uh, to find top K, we actually have API endpoint that we that we are basically serving uh, through the our uh, uh, like uh, ML microservice that we have. Um, so every single model that we support uh, is a separate microservice. So which we which will basically call uh, as any other ref inference, and then we'll get like top K back. Fantastic. Thank you. Well, that brings us to time. Thank you so much, Boyan. That's been fascinating. Um, so please, Boyan. <laughs>